Hello there, grade eights. Welcome to lesson six of our chapter one. Um, today we're talking about exploring Pythagoras' theorem. So this is actually where we develop uh, and start to use and apply um, the formula that goes along with Pythagoras' theorem. So we've basically been doing it already, and I'm going to give you some examples of, of how we've actually been doing it. All right. Um, so the idea behind this is trying to figure out that uh, we can only technically use Pythagoras' theorem if we have a right angle triangle. All right, so um, I've got three examples here. So if we have uh, a triangle like this, all right, so this would be uh, an, an acute triangle where this is going to be different than this, which is different than this. So the side lengths are not the same. Uh, but we don't have a right angle, okay? So we might have an area here, we're going to have an area here, and then we're going to have an area here. So if I had a length of 9, my area would be 81. If I had a length of 8, my area would be 64. And then if I had a length of 6, my area would be 36. So that's example number 1. Um, and our largest area here is this one, okay? Then if I go to the next one where I actually have, oh, this might be a bit of a challenge, but um, if I actually have a right angle, okay, um, they're obviously not going to be squares, just to make sure that I can fit everything in, um, just make sure that you guys can see everything here, all right? Um, so if this, so obviously all three of these are different lengths as well. They don't have to be the same. But if this is 10, this might be 100. Uh, if we have this as 8, this would be 64. And then if this was 6, that would be 36. So our largest area is here. Okay, and then for the last one, I'm going to draw it over here. So if we have uh, something like this, for example, where our longest, once again, all three of these are different lengths, um, our longest line is the one we're focusing on. So if this is 11, we'd have 121. Okay. If this is 8, we'd have 64. Uh, and if this is 6, we would also have 36. So you're noticing a couple things that's going on. We've got the same lengths for our shorter distances. Okay. But when we actually go through the math and we say, okay, well, we have 36 and 64 in each of the examples. Okay, but when we add the sums together of our shorter distances, or our smaller areas, or our legs, the square of our legs, which one actually works out? Well, if we have 64 and we're adding 36, we end up getting 100. So we realize that only when we use the right triangle does this theory actually work. Okay, so we have to use a right triangle for this theory to actually work. So if we can't use any of these other ones. So this one won't work, where we have this obtuse, where we have this acute triangle, where all the sides are less than less than 90 degrees. The obtuse had one side that was larger than 90 degrees, um, so that, that one didn't work, okay? Um, so now we're going to try to get into our, our formula, okay? So our formula states and I'll explain, I'll write it out first and then I'll explain what it means. It's a squared plus b squared equals c squared, okay? What we're saying is side length a, so if I was to rewrite this 6 and I was to make it an a, and I was to take this, uh, this 8 and change it into a b, and then if I change this 10 into a c, all right? So what's going on here is we're actually saying the square of the length of leg A, so whatever this is, the square would be the number times itself, so we got 36, plus the square of the uh, leg B, okay, so we have leg B, which was 8, and we got 64, equals the square of leg C, all right? So, or in other words, this, this squared plus this squared equals our bigger square, so the area of the two smaller ones equal uh, the bigger ones, or equals the, the, the square of the hypotenuse. 
So in this example, when we actually go through, what do we get? So if we didn't necessarily have uh, what length c was, all right, we would say if we knew that this was 6 and this was 8, we would say 6 squared plus 8 squared equals c squared. 6 plus 36 times 6 is 36. 8 times 8 is 64 equals c squared. We add those together, we get 100 equals c squared. That would be the area of the square, but how often are you needed needing the area of a square? All right, if you're actually trying to calculate like the distance on a ramp, if you know how far away you want the ramp to be and all that stuff, um, you're going to want to know the distance from here to here, not the area of the square above it. That doesn't, that's not going to help you. So what would we have to do? We have to square root both sides. So when we square root both sides, the square root and the squared cancel each other out. Okay, it's like times 2 divided by 2. They're canceling each other out. So then we get 10 equals c. So c would be the length. c squared would be the area. All right, so that's how we technically use the formula um, for this. So uh, what your examples are going to be uh, in your homework is you're going to be given a bunch of different sides. And you basically have to determine if that triangle is a right triangle or not. Okay, so I'll give you a, a quick example. Um, of exactly what I'm talking about so that it will make sense for you, okay? Um, so, uh, so say I give you like a set of numbers, okay? And if these are uh, the side lengths, then you can try to figure out which ones might actually work. So say if we had 16, 30, and 34, all right? So what we can do is we can actually put all of these numbers in, okay? So we could say 16 squared plus 30 squared should equal 34 squared, all right? So I'm going to take my calculator. I'm going to go 16 times 16. Oops, 16 times 16 gives me 256 plus 30 times 30 is 900 equals 34 times 34, see if it equals 1,156. So when I add these together, okay, 256 plus 956, I get 1,156 equals 1,156. So that means this one would be a right triangle. All right, so then you're going to do more examples similar to that to try to figure out which are right triangles and which are not. Okay. Um, or you might be given two numbers and you might not know what the third one is. And you might have to try to calculate uh, the third one. And I'll give you an example of that. And this is probably a more similar question. Okay, So if we had 14, 48, and then we don't know what the other one is. Okay, So we have two numbers. So we're going to say, put it in, 14 squared plus 48 Oops, not 14 again, plus 48 squared equals c squared, okay? 14 times 14 is 196, plus 48 times 48 gives me uh, 2,304 equals c squared. So then I add these together, plus 196, and I get 2,500 equals c squared. Squared. I am not done. What do I have to do? I have to square root both of those numbers. So on my calculator, you guys might have the symbol uh, that looks like this one. So all I have to do is if I take that number already and I press this, it gives me what my number is going to be. So in this case, it's 50. Okay, 50 equals C. However, I can look at this already and I know that 25 by itself is a perfect square. And then I have two zeros. And I know that 100 is also a perfect square. So basically what I'm say, taking is I'm taking 25. I know the square root of 25 is 5. And I know the square root of 100 is 10. So I'm putting those together. All right. So um, that's going to be it for today. Uh, make sure that you do your uh, assigned homework. If you have any questions, um, bring those questions to me during our Zoom chat. Uh, uh, message me on, on Hangouts if you need. 
um, and I'm happy to help. All right, have a good day. Good luck.